Hello everyone, this is Bart Coppens, the internet's number one butterfly and mothman on YouTube and social media. And today I'm back with a short video because I've made so many long videos. Some of my people have asked, but don't forget making the short ones. And today I'm just going to show off this wonderful species that I'm trying to breed. Am I going to be successful? Well, I don't know. But this right here is Neoris Hutoni. As you can see, it's a very shy species. It's also known as Hutton's Emperor Moth. And what's interesting, despite having a large size, that these moths only live for a few days. Yes, it's normal for silk moths or emperor moths to have short lives, but this species kind of takes the cake. Because these moths literally live for three or four days, which is crazy for a moth as big as this. Caterpillars are easy to raise too. Let me show you some of the caterpillars I've been rearing of this beauty. What's really cool about this species though, is the amazing variety in colors. Let me show you some of the color forms that I have personally witnessed, just by raising many individuals. Pink, gray, yellow, and even dark melanic forms exist. If you raise this moth several times, you'll get different color forms each time. This species is found in many places and the situation is a bit complicated because it's divided in many subspecies. Today I am not going to get into all the subspecies. I'll tell you it's found in northern India, in Turkmenistan, in Turkey and parts of China. Depending on how you see the taxonomy of the species, you could say Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. However, however, I'll make a longer video about this species in the future, its potential other species and subspecies, and why there is so much confusion about it. The moths are super short lived for a very large species. Often they live only for three to four days, which is crazy for such a large moth. In captivity they are easy to breed and the caterpillars are kind of beautiful. Maybe I can show you a sneak peek of the caterpillars. There you go, they are hairy and green. It's possible to raise them on pear, on cherry, on willow, on sweet gum. But their favorite, one of their favorite plants, I think, is privet, but surprisingly also olive, lilac, and cherry seems to work well. Now, if we're lucky, I might even film a little life cycle of this species in the future. I really can't say much. I'm just making a short video showing off the really cool species that I'm breeding at the moment. Okay, so stay tuned if you want this to happen. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this short update with various color forms. See you in the next one.